everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, today's an exciting day. We're going to go head off and see if we can't find some burrowing owls. Uh, another beautiful day here in southern British Columbia. Uh, other than worryingly, there is some smoke in the air today, so hopefully it's just uh, um, you know, fires from further, further afield, but I know there was one fairly close uh, this week, so yeah, you never like smelling smoke when you're in the backcountry. Uh, so yeah, like I said, today we're going to go and uh, look for burrowing owl. They've had a pretty dark history in British Columbia. Um, they have, uh, they were officially extirpated, uh, so effectively removed from the landscape uh, many years ago, and they are now uh, being reintroduced to a new number of locations uh, with limited success. Um, unfortunately, the, the habitat that they typically like is also highly coveted by us humans. So they're basically developed out of existence in British Columbia. Uh, you know, there's a few pockets now where they're being reintroduced into uh, protected habitat zones. Uh, so that's what we're going to be wandering into today. Uh, this is definitely a very going to be a, a low key, quiet shoot, sneak in, sneak out. Um, last time here, you know, made sure to actually not flush the owl at all is kind of the, the objective. Uh, you don't want to be getting too close. Uh, and shooting video with my camera shoots at a thousand mils, so I should be able to get some decent footage uh, and really be able to keep my distance as well. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of where we're going to be heading into today. It's a beautiful morning. Hopefully the wind doesn't pick up too much. Yeah, it's a, a, a bit of a hoof in, so let's get the pack on and uh, we'll get going. Quite an amazing variety of flowers. Uh, you know, your classic sage. Uh, it's quite an amazing habitat, really is. Yeah, what is interesting this year has been, um, been hearing it uh, quite a bit to the point of making the news where uh, there seems to be a lot fewer birds. Uh, like I said, I've been coming up here since 2018. And when you get into any of these sage habitats, uh, whenever you have these riparian zones, so there's a little bit of uh, moisture or a creek or ponds running through. Anytime you run into these uh, uh, poplar trees, I believe they are, uh, the amount of bird life singing in them in the morning can be just incredible, absolutely deafening. And it's, you know, quite quiet this year, which is, and last year's a little bit quiet as well. So we've had two quiet years. Uh, one of the theories, obviously climate change is, you know, impacting for sure. Um, you know, there has been quite a lot of development on the West Coast. So the migratory routes have become a lot more treacherous as well. And then uh, we're also, uh, I guess it was two years ago when we had that heat dome in British Columbia. And unfortunately that fell uh, during the nesting season. So we had, this area was about 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the nest failure rate was uh, quite high from what I understand. Uh, so, you know, I think 
we're seeing some of the you know the failed returns from that um <clears throat> so yeah that's definitely a changing climate uh worryingly you know we we always have this thing you know the canary in the coal mine and you know as bird species and numbers start to dwindle we really need to be paying attention to that we are definitely in the uh zone of the northern pacific rattlesnake uh, they can actually be quite a large rattlesnake uh, quite passive for the most part you definitely don't want to be stepping on or stepping on them or handling them uh, but if you keep your distance and give them their distance uh, generally shouldn't have a problem uh, whenever you get anywhere near uh, big rocky outcroppings uh, you know lots of crevices and the like uh, you definitely have to uh, you know watch where you're stepping especially this time of day if they're kind of sneaking out to try and get a bit of heat and warm themselves up and as with anything uh, nothing good comes easy uh, this one's a bit of a, a bit of a hike that's for sure Amazing country though. And I gotta go up and over. So yeah. Good thing I packed a little extra water. Of course it's the hottest day of the year, so you know, a good day to be doing this. Sometimes you need little reminders like that, that uh, I'm not on Vancouver Island anymore. You need to be a little more careful of where you step. Yeah, that's one of the reasons, uh, one of the many reasons I got the new iPhone 14 Pro. You can actually uh, dial 911 uh, through satellites. Uh, and Apple, from what I understand, has uh, purchased or bought into um, one of the global positioning satellite companies. And so they now have access to that. And they're starting to set up a whole network uh, of uh, satellites so that uh, you can basically uh, call for help anywhere in North America right now. Uh, and I'm, I think there's other countries, you know, Europe and the like being added. Uh, over the short, over the next number of years. Not 100% sure on that, but I know North America is covered, uh, which is great. So I always used to carry a Garmin inReach, which has its own features. Uh, you can text people from it, and, and um, but it's another subscription on top of your phone where this will give you, uh, you know, from uh, getting you out of strife, uh, hopefully this will be all you need if needed. I'm going to keep an extra close look on the ground now. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see him there, so interesting. Uh, 
Good size one. Those are the small things. Three, three, three and a half feet long, maybe four. Yeah, you can know, you know, he didn't even, uh, he rattled a little bit when he first, when I first came across him on the trail. But he didn't coil up into strike mode. Uh, he kind of, uh, when I, even when I put the phone down, he gave me a bit of a look. You know, he was kind of, you know, checking me out to make sure I wasn't uh, a threat to him. But uh, he was not in, not being aggressive at all. And I just kind of, yeah, I wasn't holding my phone out. This, uh, I've got it on a gimbal uh, Flow 360 with a uh, uh, selfie stick. So I'm able to extend it out a, a few feet, so. I didn't have my hand on my phone when I was putting it in his face, so rest assured there. So we're just getting down to the uh, growing owl nest in here. We're definitely going to do a, a slow approach. So there's a there's a few nest sites on the valley bottom. Uh, they're artificially made. Um, using uh, like concrete blocks and uh, big pipes. Uh, the pipes kind of provide a good nest hole to go into. Uh, so, and they have used it in years past. I'm not sure, again, with the heat dome and everything a couple of years ago, I'm not sure what the success rate has been uh, expected for this season. Uh, yeah, exciting. This is a neat spot. This is one of those spots where you know, we're fortunate to be able to go into. You've got to be super respectful.
judging by the first look, I'm not seeing any burrowing owls, unfortunately. Um, oh, well, it is what it is. I've had a, some great video of a meadow lark singing and some neat flyby shots. So I'll take that. That's all good. I didn't, I was, was kind of half expecting to not find any owls, unfortunately. Uh, like I said, hadn't heard any reports this year, so. But it's a nice morning for a hike, so I figured I'd have to come have a look. I probably don't want to hang out too long here because it is supposed to be the hottest day of the year, so. Uh, and it's getting really smoky, which is really concerning. I don't know where the fire is. Um, like I said, there was one up near Peachland. Uh, but that's probably 100k from here or more. Um, so yeah, not really sure what's going on. So uh, it's always concerning when you have smoke uh, near you or there's smoke in the air. It's definitely uh, put you on high alert. That's for sure. Uh, given that it's supposed to be 36 degrees and smoky, yeah, probably don't want to be hiking in that. I'll try and get a 